Welcome. Wel welcome back to Revitalize. It is such an honor to be on stage with our next three guests. As a, as a former basketball player and basketball fan, this is like Jordan, Bird, and Magic of Doctors, <laughs> the dream team. Uh, so let's get them up here. Dr. Frank Lippman, Dr. Joel Kahn, and Dr. Mark Hyman. We're going to talk food. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I get a hug? Frank's my doctor, too, so we hug. He's seen a lot of me. We're not going to talk about that, though. Yes. Um, so we've got Hyman, Lippman, and Khan. Law firm. Yeah, are we going to start a personal injury law firm here, or are we going to talk food? 1-800-EAT-CLEAN. Take on McDonald's. Um, so let's get started. Frank, I'm going to get started with you. Uh -oh. Fats. <laughs> fats. I love fats. Really? Fats are good. You know, we've been brainwashed to think fats are bad for us, but fats are actually good for us. And in fact, all the research now, or most of the research now, is, is showing that fats, including saturated fats, are actually good for us. And it's really interesting, you know, f because of flawed research in the 50s, we got brainwashed to think fats were bad. And even now that I know that fats are good, when I'm eating fat, and I'm eating a lot of fat, I'm thinking my, my arteries are clogging up, which is nonsense. Don't think that, right? <laughs> no, no. That's what I'm saying. I know it's not true, but it's such a powerful myth we have that fats are bad, that fats clog our arteries, and fats make us fat. Fats don't make us fat. Fats don't make us... Um, don't clog our arteries, and the, the, the important thing is there's good fats and there's bad fats. Man-made fats are bad fats, but the natural fats, the coconut oil, um, avocados, even you know, butter from grass-fed meat, and I'm sorry to say, you know, for the vegans, even fat from grass-fed steak. Lamb fat? Um, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are good fats. So, you know, I'm a huge fat fan, and I know, you know, with my patients, and with myself, when I switched over to eating more fat and I got over this, this fear of eating fats, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the interesting thing with fats is what, what happened when we, we took out fats in people's diets, they started eating more carbs. And that's probably part of why we have these obesity, these obesity heart disease, and di diabetes epidemics. So fats are good. Can Mark, I say are you more? a fan of fats too? Yeah, you know, I think it's all about diet quality. That's right. fundamental of the issue here. So vegan, I'm actually a paleo vegan. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're, you're a butt. A pegan. A pegan. A pegan. I, 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 I think we've just defined a new term. <laughs> a pegan. A pegan. <laughs> pegan. A pe it's like a pagan, but a pegan. <laughs> so I, I think, I think we're, we get so focused on whether we should be eating paleo or vegan, and we miss the fundamental issue, which was that most of us agree on most of the things. We should not eat any crap. Right? <laughs> if you eat crap, you feel like crap. Right. So no processed foods, no sugar, no processed grains, no food additives, hormones, all that stuff that isn't real food, we shouldn't eat. Right. And then the rest of it, you know, we all agree we should be eating tons of plants, you know, right. lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of nuts and seeds. And then where we sort of get into the gray areas are what about pro animal protein, which kinds of animal protein, fish or not fish, meat or not meat, grass fed, this and that. And what about grains and beans? So these are all sort of the questions. And the real issue is, what's right for you? Right. And, and you know, in functional medicine, we understand that everybody's different, genetically different. So saturated fat, for example, there are some people who eat saturated fat that creates obesity and inflammation. Other people, it doesn't. And we understand there's genetic heterogeneity in populations so that everybody actually is very different. Right. So finding what's right for you is key. And if you are somebody with an autoimmune disease, and you're eating tons of grains, it might really activate your gut flora to overgrow certain bacteria that create inflammation, alter your microbiome, and lead to you know, chronic illness. Whereas if you're otherwise healthy, you know, and you're running uh, ultra marathons, and you're eating tons of grains and beans, and you feel good, and you've got a great microbiome, which you know, I think some people in this audience do. Right. Well, we, then have, you can people, we have those kits here, the Ubiome kits. I, I, yes. I test yes. their microbiome. They, they, they used to call me Dr. C every poop at Canyon Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about fats, Joel? Well, 
I have extended the olive leaf to my paleo friends in one of my writings on Mind Body Green, what a vegan cardiologist finds wonderful right. about the paleo diet. Because when you go through a book like Lauren Cordain, sort of the father of the paleo movement, you can find so much to agree on. And right. I think that is the bridge and the commonality. I still, as a practicing cardiologist that gets inside people's hearts every week, about 15,000 times I've been inside people's hearts, Whoa. I do divide a little line here. And I mean, right. I have to speak to pioneering science that I do not believe is dead by Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, the Pritikin Center and all, that has defined, I'm dealing with the deadliest disease in the world every day. I have an active and a very vibrant practice. And I have uh, both read the literature, visited with Dean Ornish, visited with Dr. Esselstyn, the Cleveland Clinic, and others, and I've seen plaque regress by limiting fats to less than 10%, which is the Okinawan diet. Okinawan diet, the longest lived people in the world have 9% of their diet from fat. And so what's the, can you describe that diet? Okinawan diet is a amazing, um, you know, there's a whole, like all lifestyles, it's more than diet because they're active people that live in an island off of Japan, but they hold the championship for longevity. There's more centenarians on uh, Okinawa than anywhere in the world. Actually, number two is Loma Linda, which is an interesting phenomenon, a city in California that holds the rank for number two. But their diet is 65% sweet potato. It's 20% white rice. It's very low. Uh, it's less than 4% animal fat and um, less than 10% uh, uh, protein. It's the 80-10-10 mm -hmm. diet that Dr. Graham wrote about and Michael Ornstein, another you know, kind of plant-based superstar in the athletic world uh, talks about a lot. So in heart disease reversal, I'm very concerned that we'll protect our brain and our microbiome by adding healthy saturated fats and end up with plaque and plaque progression. Because with all due respect, we don't have hardly any paleo research on coronary artery disease. In fact, we have none. Right. And we have over 3,000 vegan studies on coronary artery disease. And I'm still driven by evidence-based medicine. So long answer, short statement, heart patients and future heart patients, I think, still need to be cognizant that the headlines of Time Magazine this week that eat butter is, in my mind, an irresponsible really? message. That's well, the, that, that was one of my, that is the that one of my today. questions. I hear butter is yeah. making a comeback these but, days. But I, I, want, I, want, I need to make a point here because, I mean, I like arguing, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. I think the caviar here is um, insulin resistance and carbohydrate tolerance. And I think what we're seeing in the West is um, this pro proliferation of metabolic syndrome of insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. And I can speak um, personally and for my patients. I was eating this Mediterranean diet for a long time and eating all my grains and scared of the fat. And I noticed that my hemoglobin A1C, my sugar was going up and up. Here I am, uh, an integrative doctor preaching nutrition, thinking I'm eating the healthy diet, yeah. the, uh, you know, eating tons of fruit, and you know, right. I became pre-diabetic. So, you know, and I see that a lot with patients, and I think yeah. because of insulin resistance, that's a caveat. I think someone like me, and probably 50% of people we're seeing, or maybe even more, have to cut back on their grains and their fruits, and even their, their beans, because they turn into sugar. So the, the issue of insulin resistance is very yeah. relevant to what diet is right for you. So yes, every, you know, we, all have, we all need different diets, but the, the fact that insulin resistance is so common yeah. means that probably more people will do well on a paleo type of diet. Look, I love, I'm not against a vegan diet or anything. I think you need to match what's right for I you. I think Joel would agree that insulin resistance is one of the biggest drivers of heart disease. Right. And, right. and you know, as I said yesterday, David, David Jenkins did a study on a high fat versus a low fat vegan diet. And the people on the high fat vegan diet did better. They lost more weight and their whole lipid profiles changed. Now, people say that's an indeterminate marker of whether or not you get plaque. You, know, you can't kind of always correlate cholesterol with plaque because half the people who have heart attacks have normal cholesterol. So maybe that's not a proven marker. But the point is that if you, if you look at the diet, it doesn't necessarily matter whether it's vegan or paleo. It's the glycemic load of the diet that really is driving a lot of this. And then if you have autoimmune disease or other issues, then you have to sort of look at what's right so, for you. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so I want to get back to butter. You don't like butter. You like butter. Love, from grass-fed, grass oh, so from grass-fed, I love butter. Yeah. So can you explain, so grass-fed is better than the run-of-the-mill, then it's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I think the jury's out. I think, okay. there's, I think the jury's out. I think we, we really don't know in any individual how it impacts them, and I think okay. we're going to be able to determine that by a, a finger stick that's going to go on a 
a DNA chip in the size of a device, the size of an iPhone, and read out your genetic profile and tell you whether you're going to react well to saturated fats or not, whether right. you're going to be more prone to glycemic load issues or not, whether you're going to need this or that nutrient or not. And I think that's, that's where the future is going. Right. right now, we're sort of guessing. We're trying to look at population studies. We look at Okinawans. I mean, there's so many variables. And you, right. you know, you could kind of go back and forth and look at the data and say, you know, the, you know, the Inuit had 90% fat and they had no heart disease. Right. Or the Mediterranean diet, they did a stu prospective study, the primate study, where they gave people a liter of olive oil a week at, or you know, a you know, big handful of nuts every day, 30 grams of nuts, and they had a 30% reduction in heart disease in a prospective study compared to the ones who had the lower fat. Right. So you, know, you kind of have to look at what's really going on. It's, it's, right. it, the data is confusing for the average layperson, but I think right. the, the message should be eat a real food diet, right. eat a diet that's very low in sugar and refined processed foods and low glycemic, tons of phytonutrients, and the rest of it might not matter as much. Right. <laughs> So eat, eat real food and don't get so obsessed with studies and see how you feel. I mean, right. this is my issue with Read Western the book medicine. Read your own body, right. Yeah, just eat, listen to right. your body. Like, mm -hmm. Eat what makes you feel good. Right. Rich Rolf feels fantastic. I mean, I, I can't argue that he's on the wrong right. diet. Look, at his, you can't argue with that. Right. There are lots of vegans that I see are you know, really healthy and feel great. There are lots of vegans that I see that actually get sick and they come yeah. to right. me after being vegan for 10 years and they feel like crap and they... You know, mm -hmm. they look like crap and they feel better when they add a little bit of fat and, right. and, and animal protein into their diet. So it's, it is different for everyone. Yeah. But I think, you know, why coming out so strongly is this fear we have of saturated fat and butter is, is not, I, I think, you know, it's, it's what we do in Western medicine. We scare the shit out of people. <laughs> and, you know, it's not right. It's, you know, right. It's, it's such a fear-based system. Yeah. You eat this, you're going to get cancer. You don't eat this. It's nonsense. Well, that it's, all serves know. the food industry, right? So yeah. the right. food industry likes to create confusion. It likes to get focused on particular nutrients instead of the idea of eating real food because then they Absolutely. can't control that, right? Exactly. Yep. You know, and, and my answer would be, um, and again, we are three food snobs. Mark has called it a great term, a qualitarian. I mean, this room is not America. This room is a very you know, high-end subset, of, right. and probably many of the viewers, that spend time reading books and studies and read labels. I mean, we are very unrepresentative of America. So the problem is not that we know we're doing it right, because there is confusion, right. but the problem is the 97% that don't know that there's a grass-fed and a grain-fed, and maybe there's a difference. I have to go back to science. I am a professor at a university, and when I write blogs for Mind Body Green, they get read and I get emails. And if I'm off base and don't have academic sightings, I, right. uh, I get called out. So I'm aware of a study that grass-fed versus grain-fed beef is less inflammatory than uh, grass-fed. Mm -hmm. It was still inflammatory. It's less inflammatory. Your C-reactive protein goes up. We're concerned that inflammation is one of the root causes in functional medicine of a network going right. uh, out of control. And uh, similarly, there is so far only data that grain-fed beef raises your insulin level. We need a good study. On, we, in fact, we need studies on grass-fed butter, grass-fed beef. Until then, we have to do, I have a son, I am publicly going to say this, who is the healthiest kid in the world on a paleo diet. Right. And he went through a whole varieties. And I recognize the, I, I think it's genetic variability, I'm not quite sure. But um, when you go back to science, it still suggests minimize the amount of animal-based products you're eating for longevity, for survival. If you had to rank, though, if we're talking, you know, show of hands, who's, who's a fan of gluten here? Who's a fan of gluten? Yeah. No, oh. you're not. I am a fan of gluten. Oh, really? <laughs> I am a fan of gluten. I am a fan of gluten. I didn't expect that. I, um, I did, actually. I didn't think any hand. You, no, I'm going to tell you. Am I real short? I think 1% of America has celiac disease and 6 to 7% uh, well, 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 are gluten. We just changed uh, course. Uh, <laughs> and, and 6 to 7% are gluten sensitive, which leaves 93% really? of the people that are hearing whole grains, which have been associated with less cardiovascular disease and longer mortality in multiple studies. And that's the science. You go to PubMed.com, whole grains, cardiovascular mortality, everybody on their iPhone can verify it. Really? It is a life-prolonging food to eat whole grains. And until we find different data, 7% of America will feel better by eliminating all grains from their diet. But it's not reasonable, nor does Alessio Fasano, the professor at Harvard who's sort of described all the biochemistry of gluten, 
deny himself amazing Italian bread when he we got to dinner. He does not eat gluten. Oh, I was out to dinner <laughs> with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's scared of you. With me, I he ate enough. bread. He, <laughs> his hand. I wrote, a, I wrote a blog for him about it. Okay, My dinner I, I, with I, 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 I have okay. to respond to this. And okay. I'm sure Mark will want to respond to this too. I can't let this one go. Okay? Listen, you know, I've been practicing for, what, 30 odd years, and I'm not that enamored with science because the science changes all the time. You can cherry pick what you want from the science because you can read Nina Teicholz's new book and you can read the China But study. you said you, science. You can cherry pick <laughs> what you want from the, from the studies right. and there's no question about it. But what I'm seeing is every day in my practice for 30 years when I take people off gluten and they come back and they feel better, they have more energy, They've lost weight, their digestive stuff's gotten better, their autoimmune problems have gotten better. Yeah. I have to believe that. I don't give a shit about the science then. <laughs> right. I have to believe what I'm seeing every day. And I'm yeah. seeing literally thousands and thousands of people getting off and they celiac negative. I'm not gonna wait for science to confirm what I know is true. Right. I, you know, I, you, it's, I, it's complicated. I mean, it is. the gluten wheat. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that hard. It's yeah. not complicated. But first of all, the gluten we eat is not the gluten we ate. Absolutely, right? yes. The staff of life, the bread of our ancestors, was not the bread that we're eating now. There was a strain of wheat that was developed called dwarf wheat. When, when you combine plants together genetically, you add the genes together. Genes create proteins. The proteins that are in the new wheat are much more inflammatory. The gliadin proteins that create inflammatory reactions that cause a leaky gut that lead to these inflammatory diseases, including heart disease and diabetes and cancer mm -hmm. and all those diseases, are caused by these inflammatory proteins. And there's a whole other set of non-antibody regulated inflammation that's caused by gluten that not even that can't even be measured that affects a whole other subset of people. So I think Frank's right. I mean, in this society, the way that we've changed our diet. <laughs> <laughs> The way, I mean, the way, that, the way that we've changed our diet dramatically, what you heard Robin talking about, that we take antibiotics and acid blockers mm -hmm. and steroids and hormones and anti-inflammatories, all of which are gut-busting drugs, causes a leaky gut, which leads to an increased reaction to these proteins. So you combine the genetic change in the wheat with the altered gut microbiome, and you have a perfect storm to create a leaky gut that makes many more people sensitive to these, these proteins in gluten and wheat. So I, th I think that's true, and I think the science supports that. The question is, does everybody need to be off gluten? No, I, I did all my tests. When I eat wheat, I don't feel bad. But oh, I don't. you get a hug, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will eat wheat, but I, I, I don't think it's something that should be a staple in our diet. I think other whole grains can be much healthier, but I think the gluten in the wheat we eat is not great. And if you go to Europe, they have different wheat. You can get Fine. Yeah. People often yep. react here, but they go up exactly. past Italy, and yep. it doesn't bother them. Yep. So I think... There's a, lot of, there's a lot of nuances to this, but the bottom line is I don't think we should all be eating a ton of gluten or, or, or gluten-based grains. I think other grains can be helpful. So I'm gonna try this show of hands thing once again. I did not expect that. <laughs> sugar? Ever. You're a fan of sugar. <laughs> I love mean, sugar. Who doesn't love sugar? It's, it, well, it it's a recreational diet. drug, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. It's a oh, drug, what? Oh, it's a what? drug, oh, yes. Okay, yeah. so you all agree on that. We yeah. all love sugar. sugar, we like drugs. Sugar's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to expand on that? <laughs> Which part? The drug part, no. <laughs> uh, this isn't TV. We can not, know. Not, not if I may say, I mean, about... what we've all heard lately is sugar is a cocaine for the brain, and there's no doubt in mice and probably in humans it's true. What we haven't heard is what's in cheese, queso morphine. Queso morphine is yes. highly addictive. Cheese is a highly yes. addictive food. Vegan, what's the last food you gave up? It's always cheese. Thank oh. God for diet cheese. They should be a sponsor uh, next year. <laughs> Uh, because that's very true, What's and uh, as, that's as also gluten, true in wheat, yeah, that, as in yeah. gluten, has yeah. a product that uh, yeah. lights up the same brain receptor that yeah. narcotics do. So food is very addictive. Dr. Neil Bernard wrote an awesome book right. on the topic food seduction, and others have. And um, we need to recognize it's not solely sugar. Nobody can be a fan so, of the, you know, the Jamie um, Oliver, you know, yeah. a dump truck of sugar right. that kids are eating every day. It's insane. So, so dairy, then you brought up dairy. Where do you guys stand on dairy? I mean, you're talking liquid meat? <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> I just want to make sure it's the Look, same dairy. I mean, the milk, the, the milk that we eat is not the milk that we ate, exactly. right? So that, that you hybridize right. these cows, you get different yeah. forms of casein, they have different allergenic properties. And if you look at what the Messiah are eating are these heirloom cows, very different, they're right. very different 
dairy products. Right. And then there's certain populations that are adapted and certain that aren't. Right. And I think that, you know, yeah. in our society, again, with gluten and dairy, those are the two biggest things in our functional medicine mm -hmm. practice that people have problems with, whether it's acne, whether it's digestive issues, whether it's inflammatory and allergic issues. It creates huge problems. I know I get acne, and so I don't, dairy, if I'm going on television, I cannot, I cannot have dairy, I'll get pimples, it's really bad. <laughs> you two guys need to see a vegan so, cardiologist. I'm yeah. concerned about you. Sure. <laughs> I'll take dairy for a minute. I, I, I have zero plaque in my okay. artery. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, buddy. So, and you should get checked. Get a coronary artery calcium score for 50 years zero. old for 100 bucks. Be zero. I, Join I, the I zero club. I think the best study would be to take, you know, equalizing yes. exercises. And people take, walk down to McDonald's, take 100 too. paleo people and 100 vegan people, and put them measure their, their body care. composition, measure, measure their biomarkers, and see what, what yeah. turns up. Maybe we do that next year. Yes. I won't speak to dairy and a health issue because we have incredibly healthy people. But the three-legged um, stool of a vegan is not just eating. It is the environment. And we haven't talked about food sustainability right. and raising a cows. And the number one cause of carbon emissions in the, in yeah. the world, 18%, is raising animals for our pleasure. Absolutely. We're not talking about actually animal cruelty, animal rights, animal torture. If Paul McCartney says if slaughterhouses had glass windows, right. everybody would be a vegetarian. If you haven't seen that YouTube, please watch it. It's powerful. Yeah. So I mean, my plate is a holistic plate. It's food, it's the environment, and it's uh, cruelty and ahimsa and all right. those things combined. Yeah. And I do truly worry what's the world going to be like for our grandkids right. when there are 80,000 chemicals and we have 30% of the land to raise for grain to feed cows. You know, we use yeah. animals as a middleman. Animals right. don't make omega-3. They don't make B12. They eat plants and make all the good things we need. I go to directly to the source. Right. So I want to bring that up. It's okay. an important well, point. Okay, well, now that you... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Frank, you want to... Well, now that you brought it up and you have all the support, I'm going to give you a sort of a different version. Go, yeah. Frank. Um, <laughs> I, I like being... The, First of all, <laughs> none of us here endorse factory farming. It's yes, terrible. Of 100%. We, we, you know, I'm 100% against it's factory horrible. farming. I don't have a problem with cows grazing on, on grass fields and looked after properly and getting. I'm not a dairy fan. I'm, I don't really particularly like dairy, but when I do go buy dairy, I'll go to the farmer that I know who, who has raw milk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this moral argument of vegetarians about this that's good for the environment and good, you know, it's, it does violence. I understand it and I accept it, but it's, it's removing yourself. You know, we, what I got taught in Chinese medicine that we as humans are microcosms of the macrocosm of the environment. We are part of this environment, animals, humans. Uh, uh, people have always ate animals. I don't, I see this moral argument to take yourself out of this picture and you're not, you know, you're not part of the environment. You see, I, I have a different viewpoint on that, that I think I'm probably doing less violence by just being part of, of, of the earth and, and, and living like I should be living and not removing myself because I'm superior and not eating that. I know that's a bit alternative to this audience. Sorry, <laughs> Rich. <laughs> but, but that's the way I feel. Yeah. I, you see, I don't see it um, as violence. I don't see because I'm not endorsing factory farming. What I see as violence sometimes if, is, is a vegan coming to me and feels terrible and won't eat some meat. They're doing violence to themselves. Agreed. That's also I, violence. Ahimsa is now, nonviolence to yourself. Exactly. I agree completely. So I, I totally get this, um, the, um, not wanting to harm another animal or human being. But I, 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 you know, if, you, if you're coming from a different place and, and my view of, of the earth and how we treat animals and even how we eat them, you see, I don't see that as, as less spiritual or less, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Le less moral no, than, right. than, than a vegetarian. Sorry, I had to say that. That's great. So uh, I'm going to do another. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Are those the same people that clap for Joel? No, or different people? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll do another. What about I think sustainability <laughs> is key. I mean, the, the yes, ecology, right. exactly. you have to think about the ecology that, of eating. Yes. It's all connected. Everything is connected. Thank right. God micro for Mark. It's, you put him in the middle, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> Very no, I mean, the microbiome of the soil <laughs> exactly, is connected yes. to the microbiome of your gut. Right. Thank you. We are totally connected. In right. fact, the fact that we have global warming and climate change creates increased carbon dioxide, which causes the corn to have increased starch because the plants consume carbon dioxide 
And so we get more sugar in our diet because we have global warming. It's all connected. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the, the show of hands <laughs> game again. What, what do you guys think about coffee? Good. It's the greatest source of antioxidants in America. All right, three yeah. hands up. Yeah. 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 Coffee's a winner. It's a drug. Uh, it's a drug. It's another drug. You know, it, is, is, it, is, oh, no. it is sadly. Coffee's bad. I thought that was good. No, it's good. Coffee's all good. It is the number one source of antioxidants in America because the 1.3 servings of fruits and vegetables a day the average American eats. So we should yeah. be able to soon say it's the second source of antioxidants if everybody grabs the yeah. vegetable you know, momentum. But okay. it's a good thing. It's but very individual. Wait, wait, it's a drug. It's a, it's a very yeah. individual well, too because a lot is. of people are sensitive to caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Which is if a, I have yeah. coffee, yeah. I get... Jittery. I've seen it. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think a lot of people yeah. like that, and I've seen a lot of people when I take them off coffee, even their yeah. coffee in the morning, they sleep better. Yeah. So it's very individual. How you metabolize coffee. We can measure coffee. those genes. Yeah. We exactly. know what those genes are. Yeah, exactly. Slow metabolizers of caffeine is 40% so, of America. But coffee is right? a drug. Let's acknowledge it. If you, if you, I'm not saying you can't do drugs, folks, but coffee is a drug. <laughs> That's right. right. So what's, you guys have been doing this for so long. What, what still, you know, being embedded in the health and wellness world, what drives you guys nuts? I'll jump right in. My, <laughs> my, my pet peeve is hospitals. I hope there are many hospital administrators watching. I, I think um, Dr. Gonna Hyman's going to totally change the Cleveland Clinic, and I hope the first thing he does is get the McDonald's out of the lobby and the Wendy's out of my hospital. They tried. They tried. There, 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 there is 20-year no, lease, I know. The, there is no doubt. Yes, they do. In the, in the center of the cardiovascular center, number one in U.S. <laughs> so there is no doubt we make patients sick in hospitals. We may guess the hospital sick by just being there. And it is embarrassing, and it has to stop. Yeah, yeah. And there are signs of change, and it's all dollars, and it's dollars in ignorance. So in my CAF conference, when my cardiology fellows that I'm training are there, they eat Egg McMuffins for breakfast, yeah. which has scientifically been shown to injure your arteries for six hours and drop blood flow by 30%. Robert yeah. Vogel, University of Maryland. So we feed fellows food that harms them. It has to stop. I blogged on that because I'm sort of peeved off about that. If we can train doctors in the hospital that food is medicine, it may leak out into the community ultimately. I think it's worth that part. What about you, Mark? I am infuriated at the amount of money in politics and how that drives <laughs> the decisions that get made in Washington that control our food policy and our health and are completely at odds with the interests of the right. American citizens. Yep. And you, Frank, I know, I know. Uh... Have we got another half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make time. I, I think what pisses me off as a clinician, because I'm seeing this every day, is uh, someone will come in after seeing their doctors with some chronic problem and they come in and all we do is you change their diet, maybe give them some supplements, and they get better, and they go to their doctor, and the doctor doesn't even listen. From, from being on, let's say, being told they need this drug, X, Y, and Z drugs, which are toxic, and the patient goes back and they say, I don't, I've stopped the drugs, I'm much better, the doctors don't, they're not even interested they to see. They don't want to ask why. Yeah. That, How do you that, get better? That just, I just can't okay. get over that, there's no, interest of a doctor to see why their patient got better you know because you know all they've been taught are drugs and surgery but here's someone who goes and changes uh, uh, their lifestyle and they're not interested so i think that don't confuse me. me with the facts my mind's made up you know? yeah <laughs> basically yeah yeah and so what do you guys, we, you disagree on some things, but what do you, you agree on? We love it. agree on most of oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Group hug, we'll do a group hug after. Okay. Group hug. <laughs> but, but, you, uh, but you agree, so what do you agree on? More vegetables, gluten, yeah. we sort of I mean, don't agree. I'd eat at Mark's house, I'd just take the sirloin off the salad and we'd have a wonderful okay, dinner with lots, right. with lots of red wine. I mean, it'd be a great thing. Yeah, well, I mean, that's another Really, one. that's what I'm saying. For the general public, the okay. distinctions here are honestly pretty small. Right. We can talk about, in my view, the world of a cardiovascular patient right. and what they may need to do different than an right. obese patient without cardiovascular so what is, disease. So what is the one, so for people watching, they, they want to start making a change today, what can they, what can they do? In your estimation. Well, what do you guys uh, I got a three-part quickie, because I steal things from Kathy Freston. Stop drinking milk, go to the 16 varieties of non-milk, eat a red apple organic every day, eat a bean burger, stop eating hamburgers. Those three steps would change people's right. lives and change the world. It's a nice start. Yeah, don't eat anything with a label. Right. <laughs> you know, sugar's a drug, use it like that, occasionally, rarely, and for fun. 
<laughs> sugar, sugar for fun. Yeah, and get rid of all processed fats. Right. Yeah, eat as close to nature as possible. For the most part, it's what we've done to food that's become a problem. Even the gluten, the dairy, the meat. I don't have a problem with a lot of these foods. It's what we've actually done to the foods that's become a problem. It's mm. So it's the eat food that God made, not that man made? Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we get a group hug? We're going to get a group hug? <laughs>